So I get this question a lot. When should I start learning a framework? In this video, we'll quickly go over all of the key technologies and concepts that you need to be familiar with before starting to learn a JavaScript framework. By frameworks, I mean React, Vue, and Angular. Those are the top three in my opinion. Really quick before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Atlantic.net. Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they are offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs and block storage for free for a year, plus $25 in free credits to use for other services they offer if you use the link in the description below. It's super easy to use. After I signed up, I was able to provision a new server in less than 30 seconds. And unlike other big names in this industry, they have great, always available technical support. They also have incredible reliability and redundancy on their servers. So try Atlantic.net to develop, test, or launch your next project. Click the link in the description below and use the code STACKER to get your $25 in credit. So the first things that you need to know would be HTML, CSS, and the basics of JavaScript. You absolutely have to know these and be comfortable with them before moving on to a framework. The basics of JavaScript would be understanding the syntax, variables, arrays and objects, events, functions, loops, and conditionals. These are the core concepts of JavaScript. So you've learned the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's all you need to know, right? You'd be doing yourself a disservice if you tried to learn a framework without knowing some of the more advanced features of JavaScript. So don't jump into a framework right after learning the fundamentals. You need to be able to differentiate between what is regular vanilla JavaScript and what is part of a framework. Next, we'll talk about all of the advanced JavaScript features that you need to understand before moving on to a framework. First is high order array methods. For each, map, filter, reduce, you need to understand how these work when manipulating data. Next is arrow functions. Arrow functions are cleaner, but you need to understand that they use the lexical this. So then, of course, understanding how this works in JavaScript is crucial. You also need to understand JavaScript ES6 modules using import and export, and then understanding how promises work, also using async await and the fetch API. Understanding destructuring is important. Destructuring is a way of unpacking values from objects and arrays. In this example, we can assign the variable's name and age to the user data individually but there is a much cleaner way to do this by using destructuring. You'll see this a lot, especially in React. Next is classes. A lot of programming languages use classes, so this is not a unique concept. You'll need to understand how classes are structured, how they use constructors, methods and properties, instantiation, and extending classes. Now, separation of concerns. This is the concept of keeping things separate. In general, we like to keep our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code in separate files. Frameworks use a similar concept by keeping UI components separate. So you may have a navbar component, a menu component, and a main component. Then the components all have a state. State is usually the data or the component's state of being. An example would be tracking whether a menu is opened or closed. If your application is large, you may need state management. In that case, you could use Redux for React, or Vuex for Vue, and Angular has NGRX. Next is the spread operator. Since we were talking about state, state is usually immutable, so you can't simply change it. You need to make a copy. So here we have a state object with some name data. If we wanted to add the age data to the state, we would need to first make a copy of the state using the spread operator, then add the age data. Then we can update the state using the provided methods from the framework. There are a few miscellaneous items. You'll need to understand TypeScript when learning Angular. You'll also need to understand how Webpack and Babel work. You don't need to have any advanced knowledge of these, but at least a basic understanding of how they work. The reason for this is because frameworks are not written in a way that browsers can understand. Frameworks allow us to write the same code we would write if we were using vanilla JavaScript, but in a way that is more efficient and easier to maintain. So Webpack and Babel help us to translate our code into something readable by the browser. And then DOM manipulation is optional because most frameworks manipulate the DOM for you behind the scenes. So you technically don't need to know how to do this on your own when using a framework, but it would still be worth learning how it's done in vanilla JavaScript. I have a complete crash course on JavaScript basics, 
and an entire series of over 30 videos that takes on individual key functions and concepts in JavaScript and breaks them out into small bite-sized videos that are easy to understand. This was part of my JavaScript January series, and I've rebranded that and called it my Microbytes series. So in the future, you'll see Microbytes for CSS, JavaScript, React, and many other topics. Check out those videos to get ready for my upcoming React series, where we'll cover all of the things you need to know to become an awesome React developer. There will be several Microbytes videos where we'll cover in-depth key features of React. I'll also have a full-featured React crash course very soon. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.